Have you ever been or are you currently in a relationship where you're saying it'll do? That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your Uplifting Life partner. Now, this particular topic is one that's very, very important because I see so many people in relationships that that's exactly what they're saying is, it'll do. You watch people do that in marriages. I've known people who wanted kids, want marriage, but are in a relationship with someone who has made it clear they're not going to do either one, definitely not both, and yet the person stays. It always comes back to something you guys hear me talk about all the time, which is what we do on Self Love Monday is, how do you feel about yourself? If those things are very crucial to you, those should be non-negotiables. And if someone is not willing to get married, someone's not willing to have kids, and it's something that you truly want, why are you in a relationship with them? We all know the answer, right? It's because of the way you feel about yourself. You're under the belief, and sometimes it's from the partner helping you gain that type of belief. You believe you can't do better. Why? Because you don't have the belief in the person you see in the mirror. You haven't gotten clear on who you are, what you want, and that's why we talk about the mirror exercise where we're saying go in there and have that conversation with yourself to build that belief in yourself so that you know that you're worthy and you're valuable. When you get to that point, you're stopped settling and we won't have this conversation of it'll do. Those that are in marriage, if you're at that point where the same thing, it'll do, it's stale. You actually need to go start watching uh, videos like this, going to seminars, get counseling. Life is too short. I heard a song say a hundred years is a short time to live into love. And I agree. So if a hundred years is a short time to live into love, and most of us will never get a hundred years, life is too short to be just with someone that you go, it'll do. Um, again, we know the major cause of this is specifically how you feel about yourself. So I was listening, I was talking to uh, a good friend and what they're doing now is they got this uh, card game that they're actually using. And, and the funny part is they're not even together right now, but they're actually doing this card game so that they understand each other better and get um, closer to each other. And who knows where the future will hold. But this is kind of one of those where I always share with people is first off, Know the end goal. What is it that we're trying to accomplish? What is, what, is, what is the end to what we're doing? And he and I joked about that. I said, so what is the reason that you're playing the card game? Um, if we're just playing the card game to play the card game, life is too short. But if we're playing the card game because it gets us closer to a relationship that's going to be solid for our future, then let's do that. And the card game is basically a, um, what did he, the name of it? He said it was, um, we're not strangers, something like that. But anyway, but the whole idea of the card game is, is just like I told him. What it does is something that everyone needs inside of relationships, and that's, you guys have heard me talk about a safe place. We need to be able to communicate. We need to be able to talk to each other. And I need to be able to ask those tough questions and feel safe enough to ask those questions and know that you're going to be authentic in your listening, which means you're hearing me out. And, and part of listening means being able to feed it back to the person to make sure that they understand what you're saying. Because we've talked about that before, that if you just think you heard them, you're still going to take what they said from your perspective in the way you view the world and it may not be exactly what they meant. So you need to be clear, feed it back to them and say, so what I understand that you just said is, and see if you guys are in connection. That's speaking someone else's language. But again, the purpose of this card game 
is to ask the tough questions that a lot of us are afraid to actually do with our partner. And the reason that we're afraid is because you don't want to hear the outcome. And that, com that comes back to, you guys know I talk about the word fear when people say, which is why I said afraid. I don't believe that, that that is the issue. I do believe the challenge is the stories that you wrote is the problem. And so you've written a story in a way that you don't like the results that could possibly show up, which we call afraid and fear. But because there's a possibility that it may not go the way you wanted it, you won't ask the questions. And to me, that's walking on eggshells in a relationship. One of the most dangerous things I think you can ever do, and it will make you stay in a relationship where you are saying those words, it'll do. And the reason is because your heartfelt things, the things that are really driving you, the things you really want to know, the things that are really important, you're not asking, which means you're not getting the answers. And you're just assuming this person either doesn't care about certain things or they're not listening to you, yet you've never had the conversations. And again, that was the purpose of this card game that they're doing. And, and the person I'm talking about was telling me how close him and the person came on this first conversation that they did during the game because they both were able to actually talk. And see, that's my whole point in relationships. And again, why I say safe place. What the card game was doing, is doing, and what I told him it was going to do is it allows you to hide behind the cards and ask the questions that you truly want to ask, the things you really want to know. But because of those stories that you've written of the outcome, and it may not go the way you want, you won't ask them. And therefore, you can never have a truly intimate relationship, at least not to the best uh, level possible. And that's the reason that I use the conversation about gentlemen who play the macho role and I wear the pants and that mentality, men don't cry and living in that kind of arena, the same thing I believe can never ever truly have the relationship at the best level possible. And again, the reason I stress that is because the things that make you cry, every man has cried, every man will cry, but most of them will do it in public because they've been, they're playing the role. So that means the things that affect him the most in his life have the most impact. The things that make him lose belief in himself, his confidence in himself. He's not going to ask those questions because of the stories that he's put out there about the result of what could happen. He's not going to share those things with you, which means you guys can never, ever get to the ultimate level of connection. And you definitely have a relationship that it'll do. And folks, money does not change that relationship. Again, I heard Will Smith say a long time ago, he made the comment, he said, no amount of money can ever make a relationship work. And I believe that is so true. Quit looking for money and exterior things to make your relationship work. You got to be able to ask the questions, but first you have to get clear on what it is that you want, what it is that you're looking for as far as your life's journey, and then be in a relationship where you can actually ask those questions. And if you don't feel that you can do that, the card game is a per and, and folks, the card game is a great way of doing it, but that's really what counselors are going to do. They're going to get you to ask are they going to ask you the tough questions that you're not asking your partner? And that's why I'm a firm believer is you could do your counseling, you and your partner. Just like I said, you could do the counseling with yourself if you're willing to be honest and upfront and be authentic with yourself and, and, and deal with the true answers and the same thing with your partner. But because a lot of people are so, have written these, these stories that's going to create heartbreak and pain, they won't ask the questions. And therefore, you need the outside person, a counselor, or you need the card game to break that ice. And for some of you, once you've done that, and I know in this particular person's case, by doing the card game, it will cause them to open up because they'll ask questions that they both have wanted to know. They're able to ask it and answer it and be authentic. 
even he was telling me that the, the person says she has never been this open and, and sharing. And it's because now they're using a card game to get them to basically do what we all should be doing in our relationships, and that's being authentic. But we can use the card game as the justification for us actually doing it. So whatever you need to do to get you to that point where you can have those conversations, you need to do it. And I know in their case, eventually they'll be able to eliminate the card game because once you create, because what they're going to do through the card game is create that safe place that we're talking about. Because the game is helping them get to that level to where they can be authentic, when they get to that point, they will no longer need the card game. My point is to get you to that and to recognize if you're there and if you're not, use the different options that are out there. Listen to more videos. Listen, because again, life is too short to ever be in a relationship that it'll do. And again, I, I know too many people, and that's the reason for this video, that are in relationships that they're just there because they believe they can't do better. And that comes back to how you feel about yourself. Let's build you up. And that's the only way you'll ever know if this relationship is not good for you is when you get to that, to that self, as we talk about being whole, which means you're very clear on who you are. Then you can recognize if this person is right for you. Only then can you figure that out. Because folks, as I've said before, if you're messed up, you're not going to attract a person who has their stuff together. And just like if you got yourself together, you're not going to deal with someone who's messed up. So again, the person you're with, and this is not meant as an insult, but if the person that you're with is some, is, is a, or the relationship, I should say, is not one that you're happy with, and you are in the it'll do state, it's a choice that you're making. And you got to recognize that you're worth more than that. Take the steps, value you, work on the relationship, and let's get out of this conversation of it'll do. It's not a thing, uh, again, um, I mentioned someone made the comment that you'll never marry your true love. And folks... Nothing could be, and that's a true example of it'll do if you buy into that philosophy. And to me, that's got to be a very, uh, woo, a very dangerous uh, place to live in terms of your happiness if you buy into that philosophy. Because the only reason, again, that you love the other person that you're not with is because you've written a beautiful story about them. And if you write beautiful stories about a person, of course, you have great feelings. You need to recognize there's a reason that you're not with them and write the correct story and then recognize the person that you're with and write better stories. Again, the reason relationships work because we focus on the 90% of the things that we agree with and we ignore the 10%. And relationships turn around when we focus on the 10% and we ignore the 90. My only thing here when I, when I use that example is make sure the 10% is not something that should have been the 90%. In other words, if you know that he or she is always cheating, that should have been the 90% or 100% and not placed in the 10% that you ignored it and you focused on all the other stuff like the money, the cars, and all the stuff that unfortunately a lot of people buy into. So... Let's get back to the 90%, as long as the 10% is not, <laughs> not a bad 10% that should be the 90. If it's just 10%, the little things, the things that we can work through, cool. But if we focus on the 90% that people are doing that's well, we'll move from the it'll do to it's incredible. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong, it is my opinion. Now, for those of you on Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you on Monday. For those of you Relationship Thursday, I'll, I'll talk to you back here next Thursday. And in the meantime, uh, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. See all the things that I got going on. And remember, folks, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And remember, 100 years is a short time to live in the love. Whatever you do. 
do not be in a relationship that it'll do. Make sure it becomes a relationship that you're pumped and excited about. And it is your fairy tale come true. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.